And we're live recording. Welcome, Ian. I'm here with Ian Michael Myers, who I'm currently doing a seven day cleanse with this week, a plant based cleanse, so, which is uh, really fantastic. So I'm really grateful that Ian has agreed to, um, for me to interview him so I can share my experience and he can share his journey. And hopefully, we can motivate some people watching this to. Um, to choose some healthier uh, eating habits and uh, lifestyle uh, changes. So welcome, Ian. What I would, I'd love you to just go ahead and share a little bit about yourself, uh, in your words, what you do and what your journey has been that brought you to where you are now. Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, good morning or afternoon, wherever you are out there in the world, the viewers. Uh, thank you for having me. And um, it's such a pleasure to be here and to be able to share a little bit about uh, my journey and uh, what's going on for me now and where, where I'm currently at. So, uh, well, I'll just start with, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you my current age. I'll give that away. I'm 37. You know what? <laughs> You're 37. I was just looking at your bio and I calculated this. I, you've only been on this journey six years. So I thought, yeah, I thought yeah. mid-30s, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, uh, it's been quite the journey too in the last six years. You know, when I first... Right. Um, when I first, well, first of all, I'll back up. I'll just kind of start from the beginning. So um, I'm the oldest out of three kids. And I, as a kid growing up, even as a baby, as a toddler, uh, I never liked vegetables. I never liked fruit very much, uh, but vegetables definitely was not a thing for me. Um, and I didn't start actually incorporating vegetables into my, uh, to my lifestyle until just about six years ago. And that's when um, there was a pivotal moment in there that, that really um, rattled my cage and shook things up a little bit and, 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 and really caused me to take some action. Um, you know, for the first half of my life, I was, uh, I grew up, you know, an outdoors kid playing a lot. Uh, I was very active. I was, um, I never was a video gamer or, a, uh, of course, back in the 80s, we didn't really have, we right. didn't have the, the, the technology that we have now. Uh, certainly no Facebook and MySpace and all those things. YouTube was not a thing. So um, where, where I spent a lot. Up in? I grew, I grew up in, uh, in, in a place, uh, Florida was the state I grew up in, a little small town in uh, Northwest Florida. The name of the town is Destin and Fort Walton Beach, Florida. My so aunt really, lives there. Destin. Oh, no way. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's such a small. Yet. Yeah, she was in Atlanta. I won a green card in the lottery and moved to Atlanta and I lived with them for, for a while. Yeah, and they've since moved to Destin. Wow, and I, and I lived in Atlanta after Destin. So that's uh, how funny. Uh, so I grew up in that, in that little town and uh, I was you know, always at the beach doing something outdoors. I had a very active lifestyle growing up. I just didn't eat very good. My habits were, were, were like junk food and uh, chips and uh, snacks and uh, pizzas and basically the standard American diet. I, I didn't drink a ton of sodas growing up, but I, I definitely had, you know, my fair share, but it you're, wasn't you're my not a, a Mountain Dew kid. I was, I had, I had, I look at my lifestyle now and I look at it, how I was growing up as a kid. And I just like, wow, you know, this is what's going on right now in the world. There's, this is like become an epidemic with, you know, we have an obesity crisis. We've got Healthcare people are 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 sick. People are are getting cancers. Kids are coming out with um, with all types of different uh, things. All um, um, what's the uh, the big one right now? That's um, autism. Oh, oh, autism. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, and and people are you know we're looking at vaccinations and what what's the causative factor of this? We've got it's just so much going on. So I look back over my life as a kid growing up, and you know, of course, things were quite a bit different back in the eighties. Uh, than they are now. Certainly pollution was different. Uh, vaccinations were not quite as, uh, there weren't as many as there are now. And just, things have changed a lot. But my lifestyle, as far as eating goes, is totally different. And uh, kind of fast forward that into my young adult years, like my teenage years, where I started to uh, go out more and it was like, you know, experimenting with alcohol and, and even a few drugs too. So mm -hmm. There was just things that I, as I progressed and got older, uh, got into my 20s, I was still eating very poorly. I was eating fast food. I was eating sandwiches and, you know, right. frozen hot pockets, things like that. And it got to a point where in my mid 20s, where I was about between the age of about 24 and about 28, where 
I was, uh, I, I found a, my, my career job. I was working as a, um, I was working in the real estate field in, in Atlanta. I actually moved from okay. Destin to Atlanta and, um, I was working there. I was working in this, in this, in this field. And I was, um, I was working a lot of hours. I was, um, staying up late. I was eating poorly and it got to a point where I was up about 28 years old and I noticed I was having consistent high uh, blood pressure. Every time I'd go to the doctor, just throughout the day, I could feel my heart racing. Were you working out, Ian, or had you, had you any semblance of a healthy lifestyle at the time when you had those I, effects? Yeah, I would say as healthy as, it was healthier, let's say that. It wasn't, there was still no fruits or vegetables in my, in my routine. I was uh, taking tons of supplements. I was taking the protein powders. I was eating, I'll just tell you, my, my diet then was mm -hmm. consisted of um, about 240 or 50 grams of protein per day. I mean, it was like enough to feed a small family if you broke it down to like the amount of food I was eating, about 4,000 calories a day. Wow. And uh, so between 24 and about 28, I, my, my goal then was to be, become a bodybuilder. And I wanted to be a big bodybuilder. Right. So you were so kind of fitness conscious back then or more always. fitness, right? Rather than health, it was more image, was it? Image driven? It was more, yeah. So I was inspired at the age of nine years old by um, a family friend who was, had this great chiseled physique. And I was like, God, that's what I want to look like one day. And I had this right. mint, I had this picture, this image in my head um, at nine years old. At, like, yeah. this is how I want to look. And it, and it's still with me today. And that's, I look back over my life and I've, I've done like a scan and I just look and go, what's kept me on track this whole time? And I think it's the vision, the, the visual Amazing. in my mind right. that I create, created at an early age. Like, this is how I'm going to look. And I was set on it. And I really, um, it had an impact on me and that picture just stuck in my mind. So even through the troubling times and the, the, the down times, I still remained active and was, um, I've always been into exercise. Uh, since I was just a kid, I remember nine, 10 years old, uh, showing kids around the neighborhood how to do push-ups and how to, how to um, you know, lift the concrete dumbbell weights and stuff. So I was, I was always into some level of, of fitness or activity outside. And um, that carried with me all the way through up until now. But in my 20s, between 24 and about 28 is when I was really, that's when my lifestyle, my, my food intake. I was really trying, I went and saw a, a nutritionist and she suggested if I wanted to gain weight, I needed to eat more food, more calories. So I took her advice and started eating about, you know, 4,000 calories a day, 3,800 to 4,000. And I documented everything. I used to write it all down. It was that really OCD about it. Um, I still have the journals uh, today, mm -hmm. but um, I used to write down everything, fats, carbs, ca uh, calories, protein, and so I knew exactly what I was getting and, you know, got to the point where I was eating so much food, my body was with really the, the nutritional component was lacking. I was eating a lot of calories, but there was no nutrition, right? Uh, there was, there was no living foods in there. There was no, uh, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, um, like what I'm eating now. So there's a quite a bit of a difference there. Now I was taking supplements. I was taking multivitamins, pre-workout stuff, post-workout stuff. And, uh, you know, what I can, what I have visibility in now, much older and looking back on it, is that I was basically just feeding my body lots of calories, but I was missing the important part, which was the nutrition. Yeah. Um, and so that started to slowly uh, put me into a, a, a bad place. And by 28 years old, I went in to get uh, uh, a test done, just like a physical. And the doctor said, you know, your blood work they did blood work. They did an EKG, an ultrasound. They basically said, you're developing heart disease. And this was at like 28, 29 years old, you know, in that little window there. And uh, that really rattled my cage. So when they said, you know, heart disease is, is, is kind of what's going on, because um, I had heart, rapid heartbeat. I was noticing that I was very anxious a lot. And he said, you know, you've got to take some action now. Yeah. They wanted to put me on fish oil caps, and they wanted to put me on some uh, testosterone to kind of bring things back into balance. But then also peeling the onion back from there, I was also developed, I had sugar metabolism issues. So that I know now that sugar metabolism issues is, uh, is an adrenal weakness. And, you know, back then I didn't know, I just knew that that meant I was a borderline diabetic. 
after right. I, I was right. kind of a pre, pre-diabetic phase. Were any of phase. those health issues in your family, Ian? Or it's quite surprising, right, at the age of 28 to get that news, especially since you're working out a lot. But yeah. really your lifestyle well, and your diet. That's yeah, I worked, I worked out a lot, but I wasn't doing any of the cardio stuff. I was not really doing okay. any aerobic activity. It was basically mm-hmm. anaerobic. I was, yeah, it was just weight training, really. Um, and, at, and at that age, uh, I'll, I'll also mention that at that age, I was 240, 250 pounds. So I was a much heavier guy. Now, I'm, I mean, at, at my skinniest, when I stopped eating the animal products and I started to detoxify my body, I lost 75 pounds. Right. I actually went from 250 down to 175. 170, 175, and then rebuilt my body back up to where I'm at now, which is about 190, 195. And I stay there pretty much all year, fluctuate right. five, five pounds right. or so. But and um, have you eaten any animal products since you, what, what happened exactly when you got the news? Did you dramatically make a shift in your diet or? Yeah, there was a, there, well, first it, it, it had an impact on me. I went home, I started to research a little bit and thought, okay, you know, heart disease, high blood pressure, um, borderline diabetes, uh, sugar metabolism issues. The digestive area for me was really bad because I was having problems with it. They call it malabsorption. So I wasn't actually absorbing right. the, the nutrition that I was eating. And that was causing a, a bit of a problem. So my, my, my minerals, my vitamins, everything was really off balance. My cholesterol was also high. My triglycerides were high. My body was really starting to go in the opposite direction. At, mm. at not even 30, I was starting to go downhill. And, um, so that, that really sparked something in me to like figure out, um, what the next steps were going to be. I didn't want to go on medication. They wanted high blood pressure medication and a couple of other things. And I just, it wasn't in my, uh, it wasn't in my deck of cards. So I went yeah. home and started to research a little bit. I found online, uh, that people were actually healing their body by, by plant-based eating, you know, by going and eating more living foods. And at that point, I didn't really know too much about this whole lifestyle. This was really, you know, six years ago, we were just starting to hear more about vegan. We were hearing more about uh, vegetarian, plant-based eating. And now it's like the craze. Everybody's talking about it. Professional athletes are are doing it, UFC Mm -hmm. fighters, things like that. Uh, But then it was very new. It was very, it was almost unheard of, you know, and I didn't even know what the term vegan meant back then. I had no idea. But what I did learn is that, and what really sparked my interest is that people were healing their body naturally by eating fruits and vegetables. And I thought, well, that's a great, that's a great idea, but I don't like fruits and vegetables. So that's where the journey began. Uh, That was kind of the pivotal moment for me. That's where, um, that's, that's really what, what started to move me in a different direction. Now, what I did, this is what worked for me. I went out and um, I invested in a juicer. Um, a Breville juice fountain, yep. which I still, I still have the same one today. Wow. And, and this juicer, all, all that I did to chain or start to bring in more of these, uh, these plants into my, my lifestyle, cause I didn't like the taste or the texture. I just started juicing everything. I was putting, uh, keeping it simple in the beginning, just like carrots, apples, ginger, lemon, uh, no yeah. greens. And I just started, you know, drinking that juice. And I would do that every single day with, uh, I would fill up one of these uh, mason jars. Right. I've got an orange juice in there now, but I would fill up a mason jar with 32 ounces of juice. And then I would, I didn't change anything. I didn't go on like a diet or a starvation thing. I okay, just so actually. you were still eating meat then at that time. I was, you just yeah, added would, that in. Exactly. So I was okay. doing, my ritual in the morning was uh, eggs. I would have 10, 12 egg whites. Wow. And then I would have like with loads of cheese on it, I would put, uh, I would drink orange juice, but it wasn't freshly squeezed. It was like Tropicana or some of the stuff yeah. you get at the store full of sugar. Um, then I'd have my coffee. I would have my uh, toast and bread and my carbs, kind of like a carb fest. And then I would go through my day. And what's really interesting and very cool about this situation, in my opinion, now looking at it is that, um, uh, I was able to, through this daily juicing habit, just in the morning, it's all I did. I just added 32 ounces in every day for three months. Um, and by about the third month, my taste buds started to actually change or, oh, or, tur- or turn on. Something happened in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what happened is that I started, to, I started to want fruit and vegetables. So when I'd go to the grocery to get the carrots and the apples and stuff, I started seeing and noticing all the greens. And I, and I really was 
wanting to bring more greens in. And this was just naturally occurring. I wasn't forcing right. myself to do it. And so that's where the journey got a little bit deeper. I started bringing in the greens, the kale and the spinach. And, um, and then later on started bringing in dandelion greens. So once that started, uh, I started kicking things up a little bit and I started doing more juice instead of just one in the morning, I would do another one. And then I started to build in a smoothie in the, in the morning. And the next thing before I knew it, it was like, I'm doing juices and smoothies up until about noon. And, and I was feeling really good. My body felt good. My energy was high and I was starting to lose a little bit of weight. And by about the fourth month, I was uh, cranking things up and I slowly just stopped eating the animal products. And it wasn't even something, I mean, I certainly was learning and getting educated along mm -hmm. the way about the, the impact that animal products had or have on the body. And so as I started to learn more and bring in more living foods, the magic just started to happen naturally. I didn't force it. I wasn't. Uh, so you had nobody. You didn't consult with somebody. You didn't have a. Did you have a nutritionist that was advising you, or this was just all through the internet and self education? It was all really self education. Um, at this point, you know, I was using YouTube as my as like my uh, my educational outlet. So I was on YouTube. I found two people who really really inspired me today, and and some of the viewers may actually have heard of these of these two men. Um, Dan McDonald, he's a life regenerator. Okay. Um, he actually was one per, was the person that inspired me to get a juicer when I saw his videos and he was talking about the benefits and fruits and vegetables and, you know, how you can put a couple of pounds of produce in one juice and how most people don't get that in their, in their lifestyle or in their day. Uh, usually most people don't get that much produce in a week. So here we, here, here I was like putting all this in and getting it in, in one, one day and uh, in one setting. And so the, the magic started to happen. So he was a big inspiration um, right. to, to me uh, getting onto the juicing and, and taking that um, uh, on down the road. Now, the other person is my mentor, Dr. Robert Morse, uh, M-O-R-S-E. Mm. Now he's in Sarasota, Florida. He's a, uh, a naturopathic doctor. He's been practicing for a little over, I think, 50 years. And he's, he specifically, um, is uh, specializes in the area of detoxification. And so I started watching his videos about the body and um, all of the, uh, like the adrenal glands. And he would talk about topics and I was interested, it grabbed my curiosity. And so after learning and watching his videos and learning more about the body, I said, well, this is, I think what I'm looking for. And he went on to talk about uh, a class that he was going that he that he hosts and and opens for people to come in and get certified. So I jumped on that and went back in 2012. Right. So that and was your first real training. To exactly. That's what really kicked things up. And when I went in for the training, I had already been listening to his videos and taking his uh, botanical herbs that he uh, recommended. I was already doing juicing and smoothies and starting to really you know take up the. Yeah. Uh, these living foods. Were you getting your bloods tested at that time too? No, I, I, I actually, I had actually moved from Atlanta to Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was not working for probably six or eight months. I was, uh, I was out of work for a while mm -hmm. and I was taking that time to just work on myself and start to, uh, you know, start to regenerate my health and my, you could my, probably uh, feel it right though. Oh you know. yeah. I, I knew I was on the right track because when I started to bring in the juicing and I started craving fruits and vegetables, I knew that I, something magical was happening. I just didn't yeah. know exactly what. Um, and I also, you know, I noticed that my, when my weight started to go down, my, my blood pressure, cause I used to monitor my blood pressure, my, it went down. And as right. the blood pressure started to go down, I was like, well, there's, there's obviously some changes yeah. happening in my, in, with my physiology, my body. And, um, and then as I lear started learning more from Robert Morris, uh, watching his videos, I was understanding what was going on. So I was able to start to connect the dots of like, oh, I, I was a pre-diabetic. So I learned through his videos that, um, you know, be having sugar metabolism issues is related to the adrenal glands and also the pancreas. And that I was getting, so I was starting to get knowledge, knowledgeable on what was happening with my own personal health. Right. And, and then what I loved about his teachings is that we learn how to detoxify the body and regenerate, uh, how to regenerate our tissue and glands so we can turn things back on. So let's just, for example, my adrenals were, were um, and kidneys were down 
were compromised or they were, I had, I had chronically low adrenals and, and, and my kidneys were very uh, compromised as well. So through taking botanical herbs, I was able to bring my, um, my, uh, my kidneys back up and also the adrenals back up to a healthy state to where I could, um, my blood pressure went down and all of my uh, symptoms had improved. And um, so that was the start of the journey. That was back in like 2012. Yep. And, and then I just continued on and started to bring in more and more and more living foods, uh, fruits and vegetables in their natural state and uh, not cooking things. And slowly after, I'd say a good four and a half, five months, the meat, the cheese, the dairy, all that stuff was gone. Right. And, and I just was like, I, that's when things really kicked up. And then I, I, um, I went through a few detoxification. Um, they call them, um, you know, where you where you kind of, you, you hit the wall a couple of times when you're going into a cleanse or a detox and they call it like, um, you know, like, uh, what, what is it? It's where your body goes into this, this breakdown mode where you're really eliminating toxins and yep. you kind of get a little bit Shock. sick. And, <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I think I had it, that a little bit. <laughs> so I went through it like for two weeks. If you could yeah. imagine that I was literally like cold and flu like symptoms. I was sneezing. I was coughing. I was, um, coughing up mucus and phlegm. It was just, there was a lot going on. And, you know, this was kind of the, uh, my body was expectorating and getting rid of stuff. And, yeah. um, before I knew it, after being at, after being on the herbs and the fruits and the vegetables exclusively for about six to seven months, um, what I noticed is that my weight went down significantly to the point where I was like 170 pounds and people thought I was sick. They thought I was, you know, crazy. And you're what, a what never are you <laughs> yeah. They're like, what are you doing? You, you've lost so much weight. Are you sick? Do you have cancer? What's going on? None of my clothes fit. I, I literally, I was very gaunt in the face and, uh, uh, it was a, it was quite the experience and mentally it was challenging for me as a man to go from 250 pounds to 170. I right. felt like I was, uh, going to get pushed around. I felt like, uh, cause a part of me wanted to be big and strong, so I wouldn't be pushed around. And it was just part of my, my thinking back then. And then what I noticed is when I lost the weight psychologically, I went through some challenge, some mental challenges and e you know, the ego was like shake. It was very uh, rattled, you know? So as a man, I, I, I remember feeling, um, feeling a little bit, feeling a lot of emotional things coming up. Right. And I, and so I had to sit with that and just, um, you know, let, scan my body and say, everything is okay. I, uh, I'll never forget my mentor, Robert Moore saying, you are on a really good track. He said, you're going to have to get comfortable right now with being skinny because what's happening is your body is letting go of all of the toxic metabolic waste that's accumulated and built up in your body from years and years. You, you got almost 30 years of uh, eating improperly and, and 30 years of like all of this other, this stuff built up. He's like, yeah. so you're going to get skinny before you can rebuild. If you do it properly, you're going to get skinny first. Then, th then you have a, have a nice, um, um, then you have a good platform to rebuild your body back on. Right. And so uh, so I took his advice and, yeah. um, I, and I was okay with getting skinny because he said, when you, when you drop the weight, you get down, you flush out, it's like wringing a sponge out, you know, like all of the stuff you wipe up off the counter and the sponge is full of nasty stuff. You squeeze it out, get rid of all that residue and all that stuff. And then you got a clean sponge to work with. And yeah. it's kind of like my body. It was like a sponge. So I was just wring out the sponge. And then when I reached, when I started back in, I was starting with a healthy body or a healthy sponge and I absorbed all the nutrition, if that makes sense. So I, everything I was eating and putting in yeah. my body from that point on was being absorbed and utilized to the highest good. And I felt amazing. So, right. Yeah. Sleeping better. And oh, you know, yeah. tell me about some of the effects, the positive effects. <clears throat> so the, you know, I've always been into exercise. So that was one of my, that's always been a part of me in some way. Um, I was riding my bike. I went from when I first started, Back in 2012 with this whole thing, I went from riding my bike maybe five miles to riding 20 and 30 miles and eating watermelon on the way and just like grapes and watermelon and eating fruit. And um, I felt so good. My energy levels were soaring. I, my sleep actually used to require seven to eight hours of sleep. And when I started eating this way, because of all the high water content, the vitamins, the minerals, my sleep actually decreased. I actually, six hours of sleep is what I 
generally run on now. I don't, wow. I don't need, in awesome. fact, it's hard, it's hard for me to sleep more than six hours now. Wow, and, and others, you know, that I've met on this path who have done similar things, who also um, have worked with Robert Morris or certified with him have had ex similar experiences. So it just tells me one thing that these fruits and these vegetables in their natural state, as well as the botanical herbs have the ability to literally, you know, fuel our nervous system, fuel our body, give us what we need so we can thrive and survive while we're here. Yeah. yeah. Um, no need for afternoon naps, I'm guessing. Well, those are good. I, I'll take yeah. a 10 or a 15 minute nap just to kind of reset the brain, you know, just mm -hmm. in the middle of the day, I'll just take a quick snooze and, you know, it's just a, it's just a reset the, the brain. So it so, cause we've got so much information coming in every second of the day that right. uh, it can get overwhelming. So a good meditation for five, between five and 20 minutes is good just yeah. to kind of reset. Um, but my, some of the other things I experienced was a uh, faster recovery with exercise. And, um, if I, um, if I, I had some teeth work done and I noticed that my body healed very, very quickly. And, um, my, my, my body's ability to heal from anything, it was, it was, it was, um, what's the word I'm looking for was, um, amplified, but here's the thing, you know, we know that fruit, that these vegetables, uh, we'll just use leafy greens and things like celery and cucumbers. These vegetables are high water fruits and vegetables, and they're highly alkaline forming, which is one of the beautiful things about these, these foods is that they put out inflammation. So, yep. so if we're having, say, some surgery done, well, the body is naturally going to give off cortisol, things like that to protect the body um, when it's in fight or flight or something. You know, if we break something instantly, we're like, we get a surge of uh, adrenaline and then we get uh, inflammation starts to set in. Well, inflammation is just basically you know, the body is uh, becoming inflamed and it's, it is what it's trying to do is protect us. Yeah. And these fruits and vegetables with their high alkalinity and their high water content actually help to kind of put out the inflammation. They do the opposite. They bring in alkalinity and put out the fire uh, from right. the acids. So it really helps with recovery. It helps to uh, keep that acidity down in the body, keep our, our pH balanced so we can, you know, feel good. So we're not always the acids make our, our, our body stiff and tight and hard. So we yeah. don't want that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. I'm, I mean, I'm sold on it. I'm like, yeah, I have to <laughs> bring it up a notch. I want to experience yeah. all of that. What, what I'm curious about is when you were making the shifts, was there any challenges, Ian, or were you just feeling so sick and tired that it was easy to make the changes, you know, like with sugar withdrawals or socially, I imagine. Yeah. I think my, when I was in this, when I got on this journey, I was, I was in a unique place. First of all, I had, um, just give a quick rundown. I was in Atlanta. Um, I lost my father to a car accident. And so I inherited some money and that is what prompted me to change my lifestyle. My, my, my health was not in very good shape at that point. Um, I lost my father to a car accident, uh, lost a few other family members, which really you put, you can comp compound all of this stuff happening along with my health. And I said, okay, it's time to hit the reset button. I need to figure out a way to, uh, what I need to do next. And mm -hmm. what came to me then was that I, I needed to move. I needed to go somewhere and restart my, reset my, my life and find myself. And um, that's what I did. So I left my job of almost nine years, which I was doing very well at. And I left because I was looking for something. I knew there, I was seeking at that time. And, and it took me to Denver, Colorado, where I had only been one time. I didn't know anybody there. I, and I thought, I want to be near the mountains and nature. And that was where I went to retreat. And I, I lived in Denver for about six years. My first few uh, years there, I was in a deep place of like inquiry of who am I? What am I here to do? Um, and of course, healing my body was like the number one priority for me and nothing else mattered then. Um, so so that was I was back when, like seven years ago or? Yeah, almost seven years ago. So it was back in 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. And that, that was, uh, that was when things, uh, when I got out there and started to work on my, on my body, I took some of the money that I inherited and I actually invested it in myself. I, I bought herbs. I went to Dr. Robert Morse's classes. Um, I literally, uh, immersed myself in healing or in the so areas did, of healing. It didn't feel like a challenge. You made a firm decision to, to heal. Mm -hmm. So you don't yeah. have any recollection of just really being tempted to eat sugar or anything. It was just, no, that's in my past. 
You know, I definitely was tempted, you know, there, it didn't happen just overnight. Okay, you're not I, superhuman then. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm normal like everybody else. I had my own challenges. And, uh, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, when I first started into um, adding in the, the, uh, the juicing component, you know, it took three months of just adding in a juice alone. And then I was still eating my eggs and having the toast and all the other things. Yeah. But um, the, the hard, the things that were difficult for me to let go of, was things like um, the cheese. That was very, because I put cheese on everything. Um, the meat was not hard to let go of. Um, I, I think the last piece of, of, of meat that I had was fish, was tilapia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I haven't missed the meat at all, yeah. mainly because I've found recipes that are satisfying and they're very nourishing. I've been, I've yeah. been really, really impressed and, and really just amazed on the amount of uh, what we can do with fruits and vegetables in their natural state. Yeah, I'm, I'm really learning that this week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so recipes in your program. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's what I wanted to do with this program is like, is incorporate, um, you know, all of what I've learned in the last six, six and a half years, and just condense it into a program that is, that's doable. It's short term, it's seven days. And it, it I, I get to teach the the principles and the habits that have changed my life and that have uh, really helped me to heal and to also support myself on an endurance and, the, and an athletic level too. So, yeah. you know, these foods are, are all supportive um, to healing and to hydrating and alkalizing all the things I talk about. Um, and that's why the program's so special because it's literally the way I live my life and it's what I've been doing over the, over the, the time. Yeah. Um, with healing and, and, and all of these things. So it's a really special program. I like to call it my passion project because it's, uh, it's taking everything I've learned and condensing it in and then putting it out there to share. Right. Awesome. Um, awesome. I'm curious, yeah. do you have any cheat days or do you really live by this uh, 100%? <laughs> I, I'll be honest too. Um, so in the beginning for the first, so after I transitioned and started eating fully raw, um, which was probably six, between six and eight months into my journey back in 2012, I started eating fully raw. And at that point in my life, I had never actually even had an avocado. I had never had salsa. I never had um, guacamole even. So I didn't even know about the fats. I didn't know about coconut meat. I didn't know about all of the, the great fats that were, are available. Durian uh, is another great fat. So I didn't even know about that area. All I knew was that fruits and vegetables, leafy greens were the main focus of where I was at, at that point in my life. So, I, so it was easy for me just to embrace that. And I did that for about almost 18 months, almost two years. I literally was 100% fully raw and um, I kept it high. 100%. I didn't even have fat. Wow. So there was no... There was no um, there was no nuts and seeds. There was no avocados. There was no coconut, any of that wow. for the, for the first almost two years. And then, and I was 175 pounds. Uh, so my goal was like, okay, I've, uh, I got to a point where I felt like I, I need to change things up. I need something new. And I, so I started actually, um, trying the avocado. I started having a little bit of fat and, um, trying, uh, almond butter. And I learned, I was like, wow, this is really good. And I, and then having guacamole for the first time, it, it, it just had a, it changed everything for me. It, it, it made me a little more balanced. I liked it is what I, what I can see now is it balanced me out a little bit more. So, cause I was like super high raw where it's like, you know, you feel so good. It's, um, it's almost like, but the other, the, the opposite side of that is that it's very much a uh, kind of boxed in. Cause if you're not, if you're a hundred percent raw, there's no wiggle room there. It's like you to go out and socialize, go to right. parties, to go out. It was very lonely. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and at, and at the first two years of my, of, of my time eating this way was, um, was really about healing for me. So I didn't care about going out to parties and stuff. It didn't matter. But after about two years, I was like, okay, I'm kind of missing the social scene a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's when the balance came in. I started to bring in more uh, fats and started to find more balance and, and then recently, probably about a year and a half, two years ago, I started to um, uh, have a little bit of cooked food. So like steamed vegetables, um, started to have lentils and uh, mung beans. I don't do them a lot, but 
I do incorporate them in throughout the week from time to time, like for, with the dinner, I'll put them over a salad or something or put them on some lettuce tacos. And uh, so I started to do that. And, and this is where I find myself now is that I, I eat 90, 95% high raw, high, high water fruits and vegetables in their natural state. I eat slightly more fruits, slightly a bit more fruit than I do the greens. Um, I use a lot of superfoods and, um, and I'm, I feel great. I, feel I didn't incredible. hear anything about cheat days there. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you. So now, I, so before the first two years, there was no cheat days. Now where I'm at, um, I do, I will have something like a, a vegan pizza. Um, let's see, what else do I use? Vegan French pizza, fries. is that cauliflower base? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can do a cauliflower base. Mm -hmm. uh, keep it, keep it, still keep it somewhat in the natural state, but yeah, yeah. like a vegan pizza, cauliflower oh, base. Yeah. I mean, and, you can also do flour. That's vegan too. Isn't that right? Just whole wheat flour or. I don't do the flour, but I, but you could, I suppose you, you maybe could uh, gluten free or something like that. I it mean, would still be vegan. Just not. <laughs> yeah. It would be more, it would be more what we call a junk food vegan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which and, is, I hear, hey, and I hear you said French fries. Yes. I love French fries. And you know, here's the thing. I, I like to, when I work with my private clients or, or like in our group, I, I like to talk about things of like, you know, it's what we do 90% of the time. So if 90% of the time you're eating 70 or 80% raw uh, or high, high water fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. then you have 20, 30% that you can have a little bit of like balance in your lifestyle. So if you right. want to have some French fries or if you want to have a, a vegan pizza or you want to have something like that, it's okay. It's, it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not going to rock the boat, you know, so to speak, because if 90% of the time you're eating this way, then you can have a little bit of uh, wiggle room. It's when we get out of balance too much and we start going to too much um, uh, processed foods and fast foods and stuff like yeah. that, where we, we just get out of balance and our, we feel we go back to the old way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. I think it's very normal. We all get our suede every day. There's uh, temptation knocks at the door to like have cheese or some dairy or, you know, even though I know they're not good, the smell, you know, the mm -hmm. smells are what really does it. You go into mm -hmm. a bakery and you smell the, smell of uh, something in the bakery going on or a pastry or something. And it's like, wow, it smells really good. Yeah. But I know the consequences and the transaction cost of having that is I'm not willing to pay that price anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked so many years at, at building myself up and getting healthy that if I was to ever have something like that, I remember actually in the very beginning um, when I was still going back and forth, um, I actually, when I kicked the juicing up and started to feel really good, I would get up to about noon having fruits and vegetables in the, in, in the green juice and I'd feel so good. And then I, at like one, two o'clock, I'd have something like uh, the eggs or I'd have some chicken or something and my energy levels would crash. Interesting. And it, yeah. And that's the thing about the natural sugars, um, simple sugars, like um, what fruit and greens, vegetables, they have, so fruit sugar is a, um, is a monosaccharide or a, or a, um, a simple sugar. And with uh, our vegetables, they contain glucose, which is also a simple sugar. And um, those two types of sugar, the body knows exact, it, it can digest them efficiently, uh, utilize all the sugars um, to fuel the nervous system and to give yeah. us energy, which is why when people eat living foods and high, high water content foods like fruits and vegetables in their natural state, they, their body becomes stronger, they feel better and, and diseases and things go away. But when yeah. we get into complex structured foods, like let's just say complex carbohydrates or complex um, protein structures like meat and eggs and things like that, these things, because they're complex structures or, or like complex carbohydrates are what they call complex sugars, Yep. everything complex has to actually go through a digestive process that requires energy to break it down to its uh, simplest form before our body can actually utilize it and, 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 um, and for the cells and to, for energy. So we have, to, we have to go through this rigorous digestive process that requires energy. And by the time the foods get broken down to their simple, simple sugar or their simplest form, like uh, complex protein goes down to an amino acid. By the time it goes through that whole process, we've lost a lot of energy. Right. And, and then 
we're not even absorbing all the nutrition because of the, the, the length of the process that it takes to go through all of that. Yeah. And so paleo which, and ketogenic diet is something that you're. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we say no, I, 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 no, I would, I would say, I would say it's, it's, I think the proof is in the pudding. So you can, I, I say, Hey, if you, if you, if you want to do paleo, try it out and do it for a little while and then go and try eating raw and, and, and get some coaching with raw. So you, cause I find that a lot of people when they go to eat, eat raw, or at least high raw, 70, 80%, a lot of people fall short on it because they're not getting it enough or they're not balancing out. So then they become deficient in things. Yeah. And it's not that the food is, it's not that the food is bad or that they're, the food's not supporting the body. It totally is, but it's just and people that are doing this are not either, they don't have enough information. They don't know how yep. to get in oh, enough yeah. to, to I find mean, that there's balance. There's such um, a stigma, I think, for uh, vegan people who are vegan that, uh, like, I didn't even realize, honestly, when I signed up for the plant-based reset, I didn't realize it's vegan. And it was my 11-year-old daughter that said to me, so you're not eating meat, you're not eating fish, you're not eating eggs, then you're vegan. <laughs> and I got a very, like, Oh my God, I'm one of them <laughs> just for, you know, because it's such a label of vegan, these crazy people who are just, um, yeah, how can they survive? And obviously, you well, can survive and thrive. <laughs> absolutely. And that, and that's, uh, you bring up a good point. And that's why on my website, when I talk about fruits and vegetables, you'll never hear me really use the word vegan. Um, I use plant-based eater or plant, plant-based nutrition. I have a, 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 I have a shirt over here that says plant-based muscle. It doesn't right. say vegan. And the reason I chose that and the reason I talk about it like that is because I, I, don't, I don't get into the dogma. Um, there's so much uh, dogma out there around these different lifestyles. And I don't like to box anything in or anybody in and say like, mm -hmm. oh, you're a vegan. Right. You're one of those. I mean, yeah. if you say I'm a plant-based eater, that means I just eat plants. I eat right. fruits and yeah. vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's I'm very, sure it's I, expansive. If I had um, seen the word vegan, I probably wouldn't have signed yeah. up. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's, and, and, that's, and that's it. I mean, you know, it, there, ha there doesn't have to be a label on anything. Uh, mm -hmm. This is just a healthy way of eating. It's, uh, I'm not saying that this is the end all be all, but I can tell you through my own experience and just through other people's experiences that have, that have also um, incorporated this into their lifestyle, at least 70 to 80%, people feel really good naturally yeah. when we eat more fruits and vegetables. So my message is not that, hey, you got to do this 100% like I did. Um, or, or you're not going to benefit, but that's not true. You can do it 70 to 80% and still reap the benefits of this lifestyle. And the higher you go on it, the better, the better you feel, but you also have to balance out to live in society and with family and going yes. to parties. And so we have to just find a balance in there. And that's what it's really about is just how can we find balance to incorporate more of these, uh, these healthy, high vibrational living foods into our lifestyle. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. Yeah. Um, you know, rather than the term vegan and all this stuff, I, I, I am, um, a big, I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, support, or I do support anim the, the animals, um, not into the animal cruelty stuff. You know, it's, it's just wild what happens with factory farming yeah. and, uh, and some of the things that these animals have to go through, which I have now learned more over the years by, uh, embracing this lifestyle it's uh, opened my mind up to things. Whereas in, in my twenties, I was, if somebody would have said, Hey, you need to eat fruits and vegetables. I would have just said, you know what? I don't even want to hear it because it, it wasn't in my, my mindset then I, I, I didn't even want to hear about fruits and vegetables, but now because of my, my journey uh, where I'm at, I've, I've had, I've, I've expanded a lot as a human being here. And uh, I've learned a lot more about the impact that eating meat has. And, um, you know, that the carbon footprint and things like that yep. is also important. Yeah, you made an interesting point in the, in the program about when, when, they're, when the animals are killed. I don't know what, is that the, what term you yeah. use, the, the cortisol. Can you explain a little bit about that? The, sure, okay. sure. Yeah, the, so the, the animals, you know, when factory, it, at, with factory farming at least, these uh, animals are kind of herded around and they're, you know, they're fattened up. They go, they, they, they're, they're bulked up so they can be mm -hmm. sold quickly. And that's kind of the, this, that's how we live in this modern world is everything is just so go, go, go. We, yeah. How can we do this faster? And so factory farming is, uh, you know, they're shoving all these animals in a small space. They are, when they're taken off to the slaughterhouse to go in for that whole entire, um, that, that whole deal, 
uh, animals have feelings just as humans do, or they can feel what's going on and they certainly can see and they have emotions and stuff. Now, when they, when they go into, um, have, when they go into the slaughterhouse to go d put them down and they're using these, uh, these, these slugs to put them down, some, they're, they're not always a hundred percent accurate to where they, they put, they, you know, shoot the slug and it, it either, it either misses and doesn't kill them instantly and they have to do it again. Either way, the animals sense what's going on. They know what's going on and it releases cortisol into the blood and the adrenal glands are activated. And so there's cortisol, there's adrenaline. And we, once the animal gets uh, packaged up and on, ends up in the grocery store, uh, we're ingesting that consciousness. We're taking yeah. in that, um, we're taking in all of that. And so adrenaline, cortisol, it's going in our body. So what's interesting to me is that when, People uh, stop eating meat. They typically tend to have less energy for a specific period of time. It's different for everybody, but that low energy is basically your body's not getting that cortisol or that adrenaline. Wow. And so it's, so your body goes through a bit of a detox, kind of like with coffee. You know, mm -hmm. when you let coffee go, you got to have terrible headaches for a day or two and, and then it goes away. And the same is true when we come off of meat, we're not getting those, that hormone, those hormones. Now, if you're a hunter and you go out and you, have, you kill your own, your own uh, animal, then it's a bit different because usually you kill them on the first round or the mm -hmm. first, uh, you know, the first uh, shoot shot and, and then you, and then that's it. And it's a different type of um, process. I still, I've never been a hunter. I don't do that, but uh, you know, it's a different process. It's not like right. factory farming where they're taking these animals in and they're hurting them in. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And there so, was something you mentioned this morning about road rage and that was right. something that he used to experience and now you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's a good question. I, I, it's hard for me to say exact. I mean, I can't say if it's, if it's, um, I, I like to look at it as I'm not eating meat anymore. I'm eating all of this good food, this hydrating, nourishing food. I feel, I don't, I don't feel angry at all. I, I feel very um, alive. I mm -hmm. feel uh, very expansive. My, my creativity is very high when I eat this way. Um, and I remember the way that I used to eat and I was very, um, uh, I was, I was, I, I, when I would drive, I would just get angry and I would want to, I beep the horn and use the finger and all that. And now when I drive, somebody cuts me off. I just take a breath and just, or sometimes I'll even wave at people that really upsets them. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, it's a different way of living because I don't yeah. feel like, ah, like that rage inside. I just, uh, you know, I just, I have a different way of being now. I don't feel the same. And I'm also older too. So some of it's wisdom and age, you know, you kind of get, you grow and expand and grow and expand and you continue to keep evolving. And so as a man here on this planet, I feel like um, I've done a lot of personal growth and development over the last you know, seven years. And, um, but I'm also consciously making those choices and decisions now. So in my 20s, I was living a very you know, more free and open life and just uh, you know, going out more and drinking and doing all kinds of stuff. So right. different, you different lifestyle. Now? Time to time. Um, I don't do it often. If I do, I don't, I don't enjoy going out to bars and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, if I do have anything, it's usually going to be something like a, like a tequila, just a natural, something that, something that hasn't been ma majorly processed. Right. Um, so if I have something, it would be like just a little, like a, sh a shooter of a tequila and maybe with a lime in there and that's it. Just simple. Right. And, right. But uh, the thing is, is if I ever do, have something like that. If I, I went to a concert a week uh, and a half ago and I had a, a little bit of tequila. So when I come back from that event, what I do is I, there's a way that you can support the, that we can support our body. And what I do is I come back and I start to um, take care of my body. I take care of the liver. I take care of, you know, I, I basically hit the reset button and I, mm -hmm. I, um, I, I bring in things like burdock root, dandelion greens, well, things that really nourish the body. So, so, you know, I made the choice to have a little bit and I said, okay, I'll, I'll commit to when I get back home, I'll take care of myself and, and uh, do what it takes to make sure I'm supported. And, and I feel like, you know, that's, that should, every, we all get that choice. We all can, if you, if you do have a little wine or you have, you know, some type of adult beverage, um, you don't have to beat yourself up on it. Um, you can just, uh, you can start, 
the next day and say, okay, I'll have um, something to support my body and just keep working through it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some people say, well, you know, if you feel really good, you don't really need alcohol. And that's true. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't really think I need anything. But at the same time, if I choose to do that, then it's a choice. And then I will, the next day I'll, I'll take care of what I need to. So yeah, right. that's how, that's how I live now, you know, yeah. a little bit more with balance. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, Ian, but I do really want to know on the fitness front, what you, are you also a trainer or um, and yeah. what do you do? Like how much do you do to maintain your um, hot and muscly body, as I described in the title <laughs> for the interview? So years ago, I, um, uh, I got my training license and uh, back in like, I think it was 2012, right when all this stuff was beginning, mm -hmm. um, bef before I really took off, took on the, the more health coaching side. And, um, and I, I did personal training for a couple of years. I, I don't really, it's not something that I actively am, am, am doing with clients now. Uh, okay. I will for a few of my high-end clients, but, um, but really what my emphasis and focus is on now is um, with the seven-day reset uh, method cleanse program and then also my private health coaching clients. So I'm more interested in helping people with their health uh, on the level of like the, around the foods. Um, you know, I, I, I like to focus more of the energy there rather than the exercise. I love exercise and I like to do it personally and I'll, and I'll still host like little workshops here and there to um, support people with uh, who are wanting to bring in exercise. You know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll still do some workshops and stuff, but I just don't take on uh, mm -hmm. lots of personal training clients anymore. And for your personal, your own personal practice then, what do you do? do I you like to... Out? Yeah, there's a, I play in nature as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I either go for a bike ride, a walk on the beach, or a run. If I'm feeling really good, I'll, I'll run the beach. I'll run stairs. We've got uh, loads of stairs around here. And uh, I like to go out and run the stairs, or I'll go. And um, I have this little routine that I do on the beach where I'll take some um, kettlebells and some bands and the, right. the big long rope. And I'll, I'll do a lot of exercises there or run some hills. I love that exercising outdoors in the natural environment. Some days I'll go out, take my shoes off and just ground my feet on the earth and, and do some exercise outside with no shoes on, no shirt, no shoes, and just get some sunshine. And it feels really good. Now I do, I do use a gym as well. Like this morning I went to uh, I went to a gym at like 5 AM and then I left the gym and went for a run on the beach and it felt really, it's so different working out in four walls, you know, in a gym yeah. with like, all the fake lighting and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yes. and then going outside and going for a run in nature. Well, is just, I should mention, I don't think we mentioned that you're, for people who don't know that you're based in San Diego, right? Yeah. Southern California, right here in uh, Encinitas, California, a little small yeah. beach town. Yeah. And I've been here for about a year and a half and I just absolutely love the environment here. And we have uh, some of the, we have uh, some of the best food. I have several friends who are tropical fruit farmers and, wow. and who, who have, uh, some really incredible fruits and vegetables here. And so I have access to some of the best food and some of the, some of the best food at the lowest prices here. So awesome. uh, really, really grateful for that. And uh, just to have this beautiful scenery outside too, is, uh, yeah. just helps, helps keep me balanced in my life. High vibe, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Life is sweet comes to mind huh? <laughs> in every yes. way. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So What's next in for the future? What's your vision like 10 years from now? Or would you like That's to? A, you know, I, I have um, recently, I've started to just look at focusing more on here and now. Where am I at right now? Um, certainly I have a vision of where I want to go, but I'm focusing, I'm not spending too much time on planning ahead too far because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just focusing on being in the moment and being present here. And I know that this will direct me on where I need to go um, based on the traction that I'm getting. Like, for example, with the seven day reset, the program was created literally based on um, a couple of things. Uh, it's been in the works for a couple of years because I wanted to create something that could give people um, an experience that you know, it could help people to develop healthy habits, um, learn how to eat these foods and how to be supported and how good it can feel. Um, but it also was created very, I, I think I created the program in about seven days mm -hmm. um, or so, something like that. And then, and so everything got put together really quick. Now, now that that's created and here we are on the second run, second run through, 
my whole world is opening up of like, what's possible? Like, what is this next? Is, this what is just the second round. This is just the second round. Oh my God. You seem so yeah. like as if it's been running for a long time. Wow. That's amazing. It feels that it feels that way because I'm, I can feel the, the alignment with me and it's yeah. like every, everything is in alignment. So what I've been, I call it my passion project because it's something that, you know, I've been wanting to do something or present something out there to everybody for a long time. And this is, this was inspired through a conversation with a friend. I had a, a, an event that I wanted to go to and it, it, it required a bit of money. It was, um, it, it was an event that was something that it was a, um, it was a, a development, uh, mm -hmm. personal development type of event. And I really wanted to go. I just didn't have the cash. I didn't have right. the financial means to go. So a friend of mine and I sat around and we said, okay, well, how, what can you do? How can you raise Creative. money to get, mm -hmm. to get there? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, we can do a seven day program. And the idea just started spinning. Okay, well, how much would that cost? So I need 20 people to, to be able to you know, get to this thing. And so I just put the program together, made some Facebook videos and had people sign up. And it yeah. was like, and then after the first uh, round started and people were you know, giving the feedback, I was like, wow, this is exactly what I've been envisioning Mm -hmm. for a long time. This is the impact I wanted to have with people. And um, so long story short, this is where I find myself and I see the impact that it's having and what's possible from there. So it's like in five years from now, I see myself, you know, doing more, creating more programs that are, um, that will be available and, and offering just deepening what I'm doing, taking it a step yeah. further, continuing to grow and evolve uh, in this area, because this is where my my heart is. This is yeah. I understand. Oh, it I understand. shows one hundred percent. I mean, you're so committed, and um, yeah, it's really it's so rich that program. I would really highly recommend Thank anyone you. to sign up because, uh, to be honest, you know, it, it's ninety seven dollars, and I thought hmm, I could just buy a book, and I'm so glad that I didn't decide to just buy a book <laughs> because you're right. Yeah, you know, there's just something about yeah, just being in that group and that energy, and obviously the brilliant recipes and the support. Is uh, really well worth the investment. So, where can people sign up right. for the next round? Um, well, maybe we can leave a link, but the uh, the next round will be on the sure. June twenty sixth. It's mm -hmm. um, you can go to ianmyerswellness.com and uh, click on the seven day reset, and then there's a description of the uh, of what you get. There's a video. There's also um, a sign up link at the very bottom that you can sign up for. And then we'll have two more coming up in uh, July. So I think it's July tenth and the and the twenty fourth. Wow. So we're going to start doing them twice a month because it's, um, it's something that, you know, it's, there's a, a need for it. And every three to four months, my, or excuse me, every four to six months, my, my four to, is it, yeah, four to six months is what I'm envisioning right now is that kind of keep changing the menu up a little bit. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep, keep things uh, evolving as the community continues to grow. And, um, and then of course I have a level two program that is, um, is very it's like taking what you learn in level in the in the 70 reset yep. and expanding on that and growing to the level two which is a monthly program rather than a seven day reset and then there's um and then there's also a facebook um, seven day reset family page that everybody has the option to go into after they're they're complete with it for continued support with the group and and with all the other groups too everybody goes into one big group and it's a membership so it's a just a monthly fourteen ninety five to uh, to stay in you know uh, to stay in with everybody and just to keep going. So right. it's a lot. So it's a lot of fun. There are a lot of new things that are I'm going to keep you know adding to the um, these resets and to the level two and just to keep expanding knowledge and awesome. information. Yeah. yeah. And what what my wish is because one thing I haven't been able to participate in the calls because they've been in the middle of the night to uh, the nine hour time difference. So. I'm holding the vision that you'll do one for us Europeans. And we can talk about that later. Is that, uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> I think that, I, I like that. Love I love that idea. I love that idea um, because I think there's two, there's two of you. Yeah. There's two of you guys. One, um, Daniela's from Germany, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and you're in Switzerland. So right. it would be great yeah. to, uh, to be able to um, create something or even do a call earlier you know, mm -hmm. in, 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 in the day, yeah. kind of like we're doing now, like around yeah. maybe 8 a.m. Uh, because everybody's all over the place. Some are on East Coast, some are West right. Coast or in between. Mm -hmm. So the time is, uh, yeah, that, that would be something to, uh, you know, to, to try to figure out to where we can get everybody onto the, the calls. Because that's where a lot of the, um, 
the fun is as well when right. we get to yeah, share live. Yeah, 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 it's fun. Yeah. Okay, so that's been fantastic, Ian. Thank you so much for all the information, and I hope that people watching this are really feeling the urge to uh, go plant-based. I can highly recommend it. <laughs> Five days in and really loving it. I'm not going to stop. Yeah. Well, and you know, at the very minimal, even if you don't go 100% plant-based, if you just go 70 to 80%, then you, you can really start to, to, uh, to, to reap the benefits of what the, these foods can do for you. Right. So, yeah. 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 And even mentally, it just feels good. I think for a while now, I'm wanting to be wanting to let go of meat. So yeah, it feels good to have started that. Yeah. Well, happy day five. Here we are. And f here we are on Friday, day five. <laughs> it's <Yep>. exciting. It is. <laughs> Okay, well, so um, I'm going to put the link. I'll share this, uh, share this video and I'll put the link with it as well. So, um, yeah, I'd highly recommend anybody to sign up and um, go plant-based. Thanks so much, well, Ian. You're welcome. Thanks for having me and uh, hope everybody has a, an amazing weekend ahead. Yeah, thanks. Bye. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, bye.